Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Tormenting old Pete like that. All the fellas do it, Chester. It don't mean nothing. Old Pete don't care. How do you know he don't care? Well, he don't say nothing. Yeah, it don't make no difference if he says nothing or not. It just ain't right teasing the body for no reason at all. He's awful funny looking, Chester. Well, now, ain't that a shame. You live as long as old Pete, you might be funnier looking yet. What do you mean? Eh, you can never tell what might happen to you, Ted. Uh, you might just grow another ear or another nose or something like that. Ah. Uh, no, sir, you can't tell at all how you might turn out. And I'd be mighty careful before I poked any fun. Mighty careful. Well, I guess maybe. Here, pull this while I see if it's strong enough. All right. Hey, that's a fishing pole, ain't it? That's a fishing pole. Of course it's a fishing pole. Ted, if you spent more time down at the river instead of tagging along after old Pete, you wouldn't ask fool questions like that. Hold it steady now. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that'll do all right. You going fishing now, Chester? Well, say, now that sounds like a good idea. Got a special place to go? Boy, boy, I got me a place where them catfish is so big you can hear them <laughs> meowing before you even reach the river. <laughs> I'd like to see that, Chester. Well, it's a sight to see, Ted. A sight to see. Yeah, that's real nice. Yeah. That's just what you need, Matt. Another gun. <laughs> what do you mean, Doc? Now, your office is full of them now. Well, now, this is a new model, Doc. I, I want the marshal to look at it over for me before I ordered any number of them. It's a centerfire repeater. Uh, centerfire? Yeah, whatever that means. Well, if it works right, it means something mighty good, Doc, as far as rifles are concerned. I'll tell you that. Well, they say it works all right, Marshal. Uh -huh. And they're making it in three sizes, a 15-shot rifle, a 12-shot carbine, and a half-size six-shot. Uh -huh. It's a new kind of gun, Doc. If folks had put as much time in on inventing things to cure people with as they do inventing things to kill them with, it would... Uh... Oh, hello, Pete. I'll be right with you, Pete. Oh, no, no, go ahead, Jonas. You wait on him, huh? Uh, I'd try to take care of him right away when he comes in. He don't come in very often. Sure, go ahead. Take your time. Yeah. All right, now, Pete, what can I do for you this month? Some of them candles over there? Now, how many you want, Pete? Six? Oh, just two. You sure that'll last you the month? All right, all right. Just two it is. Now, what else? Beans. Beans. I'll tell you what 
I'll do. I'll, I'll start pouring them out. You you let me know when to stop, huh? You just raise your hand, Pete, when I pour it out enough. Right. No, that's fine. Now, uh, what else you need? Uh, lamp wick? Lamp chimney? Oh, oh, coal oil. Well, sure. Uh, Jonas, we're gonna go. I want to catch Jim Buck before he takes the stage out. I'll be back to see the gun later, huh? Well, sure, Marshal, any old time. So long, Janet. Thank you. All right, now, Pete. What else? Pete's a strange old coot, isn't he? How long has he been around here, anyway? Who, Pete? Oh, heavens, Matt, I don't know. I doubt if anybody does. He's been coming into town once a month. Ever since I've been here, and probably long before that. Why doesn't he talk, Doc? You know what ails him? No, I don't, Matt. He's never asked for any help. He's never been anywhere near my office. I wonder he's so patient with all the tormenting that he takes. Oh, he's always been gentle with the youngsters. Sometimes he can get riled with grown-ups, though. And, and talking of getting riled, Chester said he was going to bring a package up from the depot for me. Where is he, anyway? Chester is taking a day off. A day off? What's Chester need with a day off? Well, he told me he wanted to take a friend fishing. Fishing? Oh, well, I better go down to the depot and get it myself. And I'll see you later, man. I don't hear no catfish me on, Chester. We're right on the bank, too. Well, no, see, it's just the wrong time of day. They don't tell them do it when the sun's so high. You're more likely to hear them carrying on around supper time. You sure talk funny. Well, I ain't talking funny at nobody the way you were doing to old Pete this morning. I won't do it no more. It's a good thing. Might not come out so good next time. How's that? Well, because old Pete might just turn around and snap you right in two. That's how's that. Ah, uh, he don't do that. Mind your line. It's heading with that snag down. See him watch it. That's better. Uh, no, old Pete ain't done nothing yet, but he's getting older and tireder, and what with not even getting any sleep at all, he... No sleep? Uh, they say he don't sleep a wink. He just sits there with that little old shack of his guarding that treasure. Here, you want some more bread and cheese? Ugh, she smells kind of funny. Well, it is pretty stout, but that just signifies it's good. Eat all you want, it's good for you. Uh, what kind of treasure does old Pete have? Treasure? Oh, he got a little old dab of treasure buried out there. They say he towed it clean up the Mississippi off in a pirate ship. You ever seen it, Chester? Well, no, I ain't never seen it exactly, but... He uses gold money when he comes to town. He sure has to get it from somewhere. Pirate gold. That's what it is, pieces of eight. Pieces of what? I'd sure like to see some pieces of eight. Well, now, I ain't so sure that it's pirate gold. I might just take me a run out there and see. Now, that ain't likely to be a very good idea. Sit still, Ted. If you fell in that river, the catfish would have to help you. Where are you going? Uh, I, I gotta get back, Chester. I got something to do. Well, now, don't you get lost getting home. Boys... Uh, they sure don't grow up like they used to. It's just hard to tell what the world's coming to. Everywhere you go, across the country trip or across the street party, you carry the fun with you when you want a Columbia stereophonic high-fidelity phonograph. There's a marvelous selection of seven new portable models in smart new color combinations at your Columbia Phonograph dealer, from which you may choose. Each one is a masterpiece of design and beauty. More quality, more features, and more styling have been built into these sturdy portables than ever before. How much fun you'll have enjoying all the wonderful new sound of stereo records. Regular records take on new beauty, too, when played on handsome Columbia portables. You'll be amazed at the big console sound that is reproduced by Columbia Portable Stereophonic High-Fidelity Phonograph. You'll thrill to the excitement of Stereo One by Columbia, number one in the wonderful world of sound. 
And Columbia Portables are economical, too. Prices start as low as $24.95. See them and hear them at your Columbia phonograph dealer. Couldn't hold out, huh? Uh, you win, Kitty. It's too hot to sit in that office waiting for something to happen. Well, sit down. Yeah, thanks. Sam, bring us some beer, will you please? Sure, Kitty. Oh, it is hot. I'm surprised at you, Matt. It's usually Chester who complains about the heat. Well, he'd be complaining. He just isn't here. Well, you know, I feel kind of sorry for Chester running your errands in all this heat. Kitty, Chester is not running my errands. He's fishing. Oh. Here's a beer. Ah, oh, thanks, sir. Ah, uh, oh, that's good. Yeah, I can just see him now sitting out there with his feet in the water someplace fishing. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, too. Oh, why? Well, he usually comes in with a string of smelly catfish and presents him to me, and I never know how to refuse him. <laughs> I don't know how to get rid of him, either. Uh, hello, Pete. This is his regular visit to the bar. You could run a calendar the way he comes in here every month. Oh, he... He, uh, ever say anything, Kitty? Never. Just puts his money down on the bar, has three drinks, no more, no less, and walks on out. Uh, he keeps to himself pretty much, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. I wish everybody who steps up to that bar would be as quiet. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, those two are just coming in, didn't they hear you? Frisky, bring the bottle. Bring it up here. Hey, little lady, come on up here and have a drink with us. Come on, have a drink. No, thanks, boys. Not right now. <laughs> you come up here, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll pay for all the glasses I buy. <laughs> oh, looks like I better go up there and settle it. Looks like we both better go. <laughs> Now, that's better. Oh, so you come with her, Mr. All right. I'll buy it for you, too. <laughs> no, thank you. Move right in here. Come on, come on. Give him room, Reed. Well, it ain't me, Mort. It's that big galoot. Well, move him down. Go on, old man, move along. And don't bother, Pete, boys. We got room. Go on, old man, move. Now, boys. Aren't you here good? Answer me. Can't you hear good? Now, look here. Somebody ought to get a civil answer. All right. That's enough pushing. He thinks he's too good to talk to me. I'll fix him. Here. I'll help you up. Why? That old fool. He knocked me down. I'll fix him. He's a little tougher than he looks, isn't he? I'll fix him good. Whatever he did to you, you had it coming. I'm going to get him. No. What you're going to do is get out of here and sober up. Maybe I will for now, Marshal. Maybe I will for now. But that uppity old man ain't going to get away with this. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> these fish, I'll just take them right on over and give them to Miss Kitty. I don't think I'd do that if I were you, Chester. Why not? Well, she hasn't gotten over that last batch yet. Why, well, it's been a good week since I gave Miss Kitty them last fish. She ought to be more than ready for this nice new mess. <laughs> I don't think she is. Well, I swear, I just don't know what the use of a fellow putting in all that time fishing if nobody ain't gonna appreciate it. Oh, hello, Miss Gates. Hello, Addie. Come in. Matt, I'm afraid I need your help. Oh, sure, Addie. Sit down and tell me about it. Right, get her a chair, will you, Chester? Uh, yes, sir. Here you are. Thank you, Chester. All right, Addie, what's the trouble? It's my boy, Ted. Why, well, he's a nice young and he couldn't be in no trouble. Never mind, Chester. What about Ted? Well, he isn't home. Wasn't home all day and didn't come home to supper. 
That's not like him, Matt. I'm afraid for him. Oh, no, I had eight boys his age get to feeling pretty big. Sometimes they just forget to come home right on time. Not Ted. Ever since his pa died, he's taken great stock in doing the evening chores for me. He wouldn't just run off. Mm, shucks, Miss Gage. He's bound to be all right. I see him this afternoon looking just as fine. You as saw he... him? Why, uh, sure. We was fishing together. Did he come back to town with you? Well, no, ma'am, he didn't. He come back before I did. I, I kind of wondered about it, too, at the time. Now, how's that? Well, it sure seemed like he was took with a story I was telling him about old Pete and all. But I just started telling him the best part when Ted ran off. What part was that, Chester? Well, the part about how old Pete sets up all night guarding that buried treasure. Buried tre- <laughs> What buried treasure? Well, now, I don't really take much stock in it, but the boys seem to be pretty took with it. Chester, what did you tell him? Well, now, lots of people think so old Pete's got some pirate's gold buried up there somewhere. Matt, that must be where the boy went. Yeah, he might have, Eddie. Uh, Chester, go get the horses. Yes, sir. Don't worry, Eddie. If he's there, we'll bring him back. <laughs> CBS Radio's Andy Griffith put it recently. My wife and I have picked out a dandy place for our vacation. It has accommodations for children. It includes hi-fi and air conditioning. And it's a veritable mecca for the tired breadwinner. As a matter of fact, it's got all the comforts of home. You know why? It is home. Well, that's a sample of the offbeat Griffith humor that's winning him new fans every weeknight here on CBS Radio. His approach, according to one observer of the current comedy scene, is a 1959 version of the late Will Rogers. The genial drawl is there, and there's the same twinkling sense of fun. You're sure to like what you hear when Andy Griffith takes to the air right here at this spot on your dial. Along with Andy Griffith, you'll enjoy hearing all those sparkling comedy time features. The Amos and Andy Music Hall... Burns and Allen, and Bob and Ray. They're yours for the laughing weeknights on CBS Radio. so bad to get his shack burned down. He's got it coming to him. But he didn't do nothing so bad. Well, he didn't sass you. He didn't even say nothing. Shut up. Watch where you're going. I can't help it, Mort. I can't see where I'm going. You'll rouse the old man for sure. I just don't see why we couldn't have rid up this far. I don't want no horses stomping around. You're bad enough. Now shut up. I want to burn him out without no warning. What's this? Here, boy. It's a kid. Let go, Mr. Here, you be quiet. You be quiet. What are you doing here? Why? Walk soft. I was, I was just watching for him to come out and guard the treasure, that's all. What's he talking about, more? What are you doing here? Come on now, let's, let's have the truth. That's the truth, Mr. Arm. It's pirate treasure. Who told you that? Well, the man from Marshall's office. He says Pokey Pete sits up all night garden. You better not try to fool me, boy. I ain't fooled. Cross my heart, I ain't. All right, then. Where's it buried? Oh, I don't know that. No, you I better tell me. me. Come on, Lord. Let the boy go. That foolish old man ain't got no gold. Well, he don't even have a decent pair of boots. Maybe he does and maybe he don't. But it's sure worth finding out. Now, come on, boy. You tell me where it's buried. I don't know. He's the only one who knows where it is. The old man's the only one. Did you hear that, Reese? I heard it. Well, he was too uppity to talk to us before. But we'll sure get some talk out of him this time. I thought we was just going to sneak up and burn the place. We'll burn it after we talk to him, Reese. After we make him talk. Now, come on. Please, mister. Can I go now? What's the matter, Sonny? Don't you want to see the treasure? Well, I, I want to go home. You ain't going home yet, Sonny. Not just yet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Something I say. I got it, Chester. Boys his age are likely to run off now and then. No, but me telling him that fool story, that, that's what started him off. Well, if you hadn't told him, somebody else would. No, I sure do hope he ain't got hurt none, no. A night in the open isn't gonna hurt him, Chester. I know, but that's mighty rough country, and I just ain't too sure what old Peter do to it. Look on, Mr. Dillon. What? There's a fire out there. Yeah. Must be Pete's shack. Come on. See if anyone's around here. There, Mr. Dillon, just outside the door. Oh, yeah. It's Pete. Yeah. Must have got himself out of the door somehow. Is he dead? No, not quite. He's been beaten, and he's burned, and he's still breathing. There's somebody over there, Chester. I'll go see. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. It's Ted. I found Ted. He's been hurt, too. Looks like he's coming out of it. I don't see nothing. Just take it easy, Ted. You're all right now. Don't hit me, mister. Nobody's going to hit you, Ted. It's Marshal Dillon. Marshal? Don't let him get me, Marshal. Don't let him beat me like they did old Pete. Nobody's going to beat you, Ted. You're all right now. I kept asking him, beating him, asking him, beating him. Asking him what, Ted? Where that traitor was. Oh, my gracious, man. He, he wouldn't tell him nothing, no matter what they did. Yeah. I bet they'll never find the traitor, Marshal. That's right, Ted. They'll never find it. All right, come on, Chester. Let's get them both to dock. Come on, more drink up and let's get out of here. Oh, quit your fussing, Reese. Ain't no hurry. I thought we was just coming through Dodge to get supplies. Well, we got them, didn't we? <laughs> it just ain't smart to stand around drinking. I don't like it. I'd sooner be headed for Texas. We'll head there, now just don't push me. I want to put some distance between me and that shack. There ain't no shack no more. Ain't nobody know we was there. The kid does. <laughs> I took care of the kid. Now quit fussing at me. You two. You're under arrest, Mark. Marshal, there uh, must be some mistake. There's no mistake. Got the guns, Chester. Yes, sir. You ain't getting my gun. You got no right. You got some idea of resisting arrest, mister? I ain't gonna let you take me That'll in. That'll be just fine with me. I'd like the excuse to beat you from here to the jail cell, the way you beat old Pete. I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal. You don't know about a burning shack, or beating the old man, or the boy... Why, no, Marshal. You must be looking for somebody else. The boy says we're looking for you. Mort, you didn't kill him. Not the boy, not quite. But Pete died in Doc's office just a few minutes ago. Now, come on, let's go. You ain't taking me. Look out, he's gone! You got him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Bring the other one along. Now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, that wasn't my idea. You did your share. It wasn't my fault. I didn't mean no harm. It was the old man's fault. How do you figure that? What? Well, if he hadn't have been so uppity about talking, we wouldn't have beat him so bad. You wouldn't have killed him. Well, sure not. We wouldn't have killed him. All he had to do was tell us where the treasure was hid. It was his fault. He couldn't tell you. There was no treasure. Well, then... 
Then why didn't he say so, the old fool? I'll tell you why he didn't say so. He couldn't talk. He had no tongue. It had been cut out. No... No tongue? Yeah. Doc discovered it when he examined him. Must have been the Indians who did it years ago. Well, then it's still his fault. He could have let on. Oh, Pete was too proud to let on for sympathy from the likes of you. He didn't ask for sympathy from anybody. But you can't uh, blame him. I... Come on, Chester, let's get him out of here. something, but the car is practically new. It'll run like new, too, sir, if you keep its engine clean and friction-free with K-Sight's new 3C in the crankcase. K-Sight's 3C with Baroness quickly stop hydraulic valve lifter noises. Well, I haven't time to leave it now. Maybe when I have more time. Only takes a minute to add a can of K-Sight 3C to your oil. K-Sight 3C will clean your engine while you drive, cushion the working parts, and stop that noise. And it costs only a dollar and a half. K-Sight 3C smooths and quiets your engine, gives it more pep and power, increases gas and oil mileage, too. Only a dollar and a half? Then it works while I drive? Works while you drive. After only a few miles, you'll really notice the difference. K-Sight 3C is guaranteed. If you don't get results, you'll get double your money back. Houston directed in Hollywood by Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Richard Beals, Barney Phillips, Gene Bates, Vic Perrin, and Bart Robinson. Finally, Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.